Hello, this is Sissy with Kentucky Rose Devotionals coming to you today on Tuesday, January 23rd. And we are diving into the Word of God today, um, finding all those wonderful roses that will help us in our walk with God today. Um, and, and just want to be encouraged in the Word. And I hope you're sticking with your challenge to read three to four chapters a day. We have been, we read the entire book of Genesis together. Um, and so then we went to the book of Matthew, Mark, and Exodus. And now um, we we are in Mark chapter 6, we're in Matthew chapter 9, and we're in Exodus chapter 8 today. So that's where um, we will be headed. So if you want to make that part of your daily reading today, that's what the devotion today will, will be about. And um, on certain days, Fridays maybe, or Thursdays, we will break and go off into maybe one of the Psalms or Proverbs or a different book just to add um, some different um word in our lives so that we're getting a variety of word from different places and really just um, enriching ourselves in the word of God meditating on the word of God this is what it's going to take to see a mighty move of the Lord is keeping that word in our heart meditating on it day and night um, focusing on him not the things of this world not the cares of this world but focusing on Jesus so I pray that today um, we will dig deeper into the heart of God for us and that you are continuing on in your journey of prayer and devotion even though uh, we just completed in our church the 21 days of prayer we're going to keep on praying. We're going to keep on seeking. We don't we don't stop just after the 21 days is over. We keep praying. We keep fasting. We keep seeking the Lord um, and those things um, of His kingdom. And when we seek Him first, the Word of God says that everything else that we need will be added unto us. So we're holding on to that promise today, church. So hold on to that. All right, let's get to the book of, of Mark chapter 6, and then we'll go back to Matthew. But I want to start in Mark since we're... Uh, uh, a little bit behind in chapters there, not necessarily behind, but um, that's just where we are in our reading. So um, let's look at chapter 6 of Mark. We're seeing Jesus here. I'm um, going to speak some words that for some of us it might be confusing if you've not studied the Word of God. Um, and so I want to explain what he was saying here. And I believe it I believe it will be clear as you read. Um, but it just says he went out and he came back into his own country. So we know he had been in the country of the gatherings. We know that he had made a, a young girl whole. We know a woman was touched. Um, well, she touched Jesus, and, and Jesus touched her. And we know all these things were happening as he was traveling back to his hometown of Nazareth. And it says that it was on the Sabbath day, and the disciples were following him. And some of them were asking questions, you know, saying, Who is this man? What, you know, where, where does his wisdom come from? The mighty works that he is doing. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Okay. Isn't this the son of Mary? Isn't this the brother of James, Joseph, Judah, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? So right here, for those of you who are wondering about um, the brothers and sisters of Jesus, this gives us the names of them. It gives us James, Joseph, Judah, which was Jude, who wrote the book of Jude. Um, the book of James, also Jesus' brother. Um, and then Simon, it says. And it, and it doesn't give us the names of Jesus' sisters. I wish it did. Uh, but women weren't named very much um, unless there was something special that was performed. So the, but we know he had more than one sister. So this gives us a little bit of the, the, the family life of Jesus. And it says, and they were offended at him, which also tells us that even his brothers and sisters did not believe he was who he said he was until after the resurrection. So we see that this was a, a, a really hard thing. Um, for Jesus that he could not even minister to the people in his own town and these are the words he says he says a prophet is not without honor but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house sometimes it, it, this is baffling to us but sometimes we cannot do what God wants us to do in our hometown because people know us they know our family and maybe they hold those things against us and they don't allow us to do all that we're called to do for God because they know us and because they're familiar with us and sometimes when people know you and they're familiar with you they either take you for granted and don't appreciate what God's trying to do th through you or sometimes they just misunderstand or sometimes they hold things against you because they know your whole life 
And maybe they don't know the change that God has made in you to do the ministry that you're called to do now. And so Jesus was saying, even though I came from this town and I love my family, I love my hometown, the people here have limited me and I can't do what I could do other places because they don't believe. Because they just look at me as Joseph's son. They look at me as Mary's son. I mean, you may be finding that in your life that where you came from, people don't respect you or appreciate the gifts that God has given you because they just they see you as this person's son or you you used to be this person. I know you who you were before you met Jesus and all these things they hold against you. And this is just people. People um, hold things against us. But thank God, God does not hold things against us. God is not limited to work through us no matter what we we've done, if we've come to him and we've asked forgiveness and, and, and asking that forgiveness daily, letting the Lord cleanse us, make us new daily, whatever it takes that we're close to him. That's what we want to do in our life. And we're not going to answer to men at the end of the day. We're going to answer to God. So he was saying, you know, I can't do the mighty works here that I've done other places. It says even that he laid hands on only a few sick people and healed them. The ones he did touch, the ones who did receive him, he could heal. But it says, this is a sad statement. Most of the time we see Jesus marveling at the faith of someone. But in this verse it says he marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled that he couldn't do anything there with them because they would not believe. Because people went around the villages and um, they, were, they were saying, this is Joseph's son. Uh, we know who his parents are. He's not the son of God. Okay, so they were starting all of this unbelief. When there is a spirit of unbelief, when there is an atmosphere of unbelief, miracles are not going to happen. But when we connect our faith with Jesus and we believe he is who he says he is, you see the miracles that took place in the towns where people connected with Jesus and, and believed and, and sought him. So it says the mission of the twelve was to be set, sent forth two by two. And he gave them power, it says, over unclean spirits. So as Jesus sent the disciples out, he empowered them with the Holy Spirit to command um, these demon spirits out, to command sickness to leave. And you and I had that same power. If we had the Holy Spirit resident in us. He, he told them to only give a staff, take their staff with them, take no money uh, in their purse, no bread. <clears throat> Um, be shod with their sandals, not, not put on two coats, just to take what they had, basically. Take what you have, use what you have, what I've given you is enough, is what Jesus was saying. He says, in what place you enter into a house and abide um, and depart from that place, no, whatsoever shall not receive you. If someone should not receive you or hear you, um, you just depart, you shake off the dust from your feet for a testimony against them. He says, Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Any city that denies the God in you and refuses to receive what God wants to do, there will be judgment in that place. Um, and I've seen it numerous times, I know in our ministry, and, and different things that I've seen happen um, as I've watched um, through the years at as different ministers were not received and those churches either ended up closing or um, something else happened where, where it just was a it was a really sad situation and you know when we deny God when we deny his power we're, we're gonna face the judgment of God is what he's telling us it may not happen here on this earth but it will later um, and we, we just we have to ask forgiveness for things that we've done against if we've done something against the church or we've done something against men and women of God who were trying to teach us the word who were trying to share the love of God but yet we denied it because we wanted the world's ways or we wanted our way or we wanted this or that. Um, Jesus was letting them know that it'll be worse for that place that denied me than Sodom and Gomorrah. We know how that turned out. It didn't turn out good at all. So he says they went out and they preached that men should repent. This should be the message of every preacher every Sunday. The gospel of Jesus. We don't we don't have to preach anything else. We if we just preach Jesus, if we just tell people that God is coming, the kingdom of God is at hand to repent, to prepare your house, get it in order, get ready. God loves you. These are the messages of the gospel. And it says that they cast out many devils, they anointed with oil, all that were there that were sick, and they were healed. This was not with Jesus present. This was with the disciples being empowered by Jesus. And this is this is you and I today. 
We are to be the disciples of God. We can be empowered through the Holy Spirit to do the same things that we saw here with the disciples. This hasn't died out. The power of God has not changed. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So um, we see that King Herod heard of these things in this chapter. It was spread abroad. We know that King Herod was a very pagan uh, man. He was very evil. Just like the Herods before him, if you remember, it was a Herod, King Herod, that wanted Jesus killed from when he was a baby. So this is a different Herod. This is a, a, a descendant of his. He hears about him. He threw John the Baptist. Now, he did have respect for John the Baptist. Um, and he actually thought at this point that this was, this was John raised from the dead. Remember, Herod had John beheaded in prison. Um, so he's thinking this is him raised from the dead because he's already, John the Baptist has already been, been murdered at this time. It says the mighty works, um, he wanted to see them. He wanted to see something done before them. Others said this is Elijah, this is the prophet or one of the prophets, but when Herod heard of it, he said it is John whom I beheaded. He is being, he's being tormented for what he did. He killed an innocent man for no reason, and he's being, he's being tormented, so he thinks this is who this is. So Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John, bound him in the prison for Herodias' sake. We know the story there. The backstory because um, she hated John because John told her that she had committed sin because she was marrying um, her her brother's uh, brother, and he had been, she had been Philip's wife. Philip is Herod was Herod's brother, and he married her anyway. Um, and he told her it wasn't lawful for, for them to be married. And he was telling them what they were doing was sin. They were living in sin. They didn't want to hear that. Herodias hated him for that, um, and had a quarrel and, and had him killed. Um, for that, had him beheaded. Uh, it says, For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and a holy man. He knew these things, and he observed him and what he heard, and that he did many, many things, and he heard him gladly. So Herod really didn't want to, to harm um, John the Baptist, but there there came a convenient day for Herodias to get her way. Um, on Herod's birthday, there was a supper, and the daughter came in of Herodias and danced, and she had been prompted by her mother on what to ask for that day, and it was to to give the head of John the Baptist, and he hated, Herod hated that he made this this deal with her um, to give her half the kingdom, and then she requested something he really did not want to give at all. He was not expecting that, uh, but anyway, he went through with it. He didn't stand up to her. He went through with it and um, had John beheaded in prison. And so it says immediately he sent to the executioner in prison and brought it to the mother. And, of course, she was pleased because now this was going to silence what she thought her sin. But can sin ever be silenced? No. Only thing that silences sin is accepting Jesus Christ. You can't silence it through people. You can get mad at people for telling you what's right. But in reality, one day... We better thank God that somebody got in our way to tell us that what we were doing was wrong, that we can't just live any way. Thank God for men and women in the pulpit who will preach the whole word of God, and they're not ashamed, they're not afraid to speak the truth to us, to help us change, so that we don't stand before God on Judgment Day with something that we that we should have been told about. So, um, and and you know, we're accountable for ourselves. We're not accountable for what men and women do in the pulpit. They will be accountable for that. But we've got to know for ourselves. We can't use the excuse nobody told me, because. This is what the Word of God is. It's truth to our heart and to our lives. So we see the feeding of the 5,000 here in, in Mark chapter 6. And we know what happened to come to this desert place. I love this these details that Mark is giving us. That this was a desert place. That they were going to go rest for a little while. But yet there were many people who came to hear Jesus. And we know what they came to hear. They came to hear their beautiful Sermon on the Mount. And so we see the people were coming and going at their leisure in this desert place. And it says the people uh, saw that they were departing, that many knew Jesus, and they ran afoot. I can see the picture of this people running, uh, running, running on the shore to keep up with the ship that was carrying Jesus. They wanted to get to Jesus. They saw him. They knew the power that was in him, and they wanted to get to where the power was. And you know, when you have that in your church, when you have the power of God, when you have Jesus operating, the Holy Spirit operating and moving and healing and, and changing lives, things are going to happen that are, that are marvelous things. And people are going to be drawn to it. They're going to come and watch 
it burned just like a fire. So Jesus went out. He had much compassion on the people, it says. Um, as a, He was looking at them as sheep without a shepherd, it says. And he began to teach them many things. And that day was far spent. They got to the desert place. They were looking around thinking, what are we going to do for, for dinner? What are we going to eat? Because there's nothing. Um, you know, we're going to have to send people out to buy bread. And he answered to the disciples, basically, you saw the problem. Tell me what we need to do. Um, go get them something to eat. Um, and, and so one disciple answers, well, uh, can we buy 200 penny worth of bread and get them to eat? And Jesus says, how many loaves do we have? Go and see. And they knew it says five and two fishes. So this little boy's lunch. He commanded them all to sit down in companies, in groups, in the green grass. Don't you love how Jesus makes green grass in the desert? That's what he can do for us. And and that part amazes me when I read that, that there were there was green grass that was provided for the people to sit in groups. And he sat them down in ranks, counting them out. Now think about the patience that it took to do that. Five loaves, two fishes, and he looked up to heaven and he blessed the bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples to set before them. When Jesus takes something and blesses it and yes, at times breaks it, that's when the greatest multitude of, of blessings can come. And this is what we see happen here. They all did eat, it says, and they were all, they didn't just eat, they were filled, the Bible says. And they ended up taking 12 baskets of fragments of the leftovers that were, were provided. So when Jesus provides, he gives you more than enough. More than enough leftovers. Um, and they were eating um, about 5,000 men. And, and according to Bible commentators, most say that there were probably over 10,000 people there counting women and children that Jesus fed that day with a little boy's lunch. Praise God. So we see Jesus walking on the water. Um, here at the end of the book of Mark here and the healings that happen um, and, and Jesus just reminding us to be of good cheer to not be afraid um, the wind began to cease we know and, and people began to consider the things that they had seen that day with Jesus they had seen him stop a storm they had seen him feed, feed over 10,000 people um, but they didn't, it says the Bible, here's the sad thing, verse 52, it says they considered not the miracle of the loaves. They didn't think about it. Their heart was hardened, it says. Now, I, I, I'm not really certain what God means by saying hardened, but I believe that we, I think what he meant was that we too quickly forget the miracles of God. They had went through these wonderful miracles and then they got in the middle of the storm and they forgot everything. Isn't that like us sometimes? That we get in the middle of something that is so difficult in our lives that we forget the fishes and the loaves that God has blessed us with. This is, this is what they did. They hardened their heart by forgetting the miracles of God, by forgetting the power of God, that he was right there with them in the boat, that they didn't have to be afraid. Um, and then we see the healing of those that were sick um, and, they, and Jesus entering into these cities um, and villages and, and places and laying hands on the sick and it says they besought him that if they could just touch the border of his garment that they would be whole and all that did touch him were made whole so this is all it takes church today is to touch Jesus to touch him to be made whole this is what he wants for you today he wants you whole he wants you made new today he wants you to feel his presence he wants you to know that he still walks on waters that he still does miracles that he still feeds people that are hungry that he still gives drink to the thirsty these are the things that Jesus does and through you and me we can show the world that Jesus still reaches them. We are to be Jesus to them. We're to reach our hands out to those that are hungry, those that are thirsty, those that need a Savior. And He will be there um, through us, using us when we're willing vessels, vessels of honor that He can use today. So I know that this word is going to bless you today. I pray that you share it with someone. Continue in your daily reading. We're going to get to Mark chapter 9 and Exodus 8 um, tomorrow. So please be um, in prayer and continue on your journey with the Lord today. We got, God bless you and we will definitely see you soon.